so if i give you a scenario tell me the logic in java 8 i have a list of employees where employees has some properties like employee id is there employee salary is there employee name is there okay okay so can you tell okay. me the logic uh in java 8 to provide the top 3 highest paid employees mm, using java 8 means yeah. using lamp solution yeah. or uh, stream api correct stream api uh we can filter it out using predict to uh on the basis of uh what is the where condition uh highest startup seller yeah yeah uh have has we can uh, using predict to test it and uh, uh means we can provide the or uh, in the logic to checking the highest salary okay so i mean do you need to in filter list in array list we have uh, pojo or it's just like element add the the employee class is a pojo class which has okay. some we created some object out of it so each object has uh, we are storing employee name employee salary employee id or any other thing like okay that. we we can using uh, 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 at the filter it uh, method of uh, collection and using this uh, providing predict uh, using a predict interface uh, test method to calculate the highest sort of salary so why would you go for filter i mean uh, if we want to in collection i mean suppose collection. no in general if if you want to mm. find out uh, highest in something what you will do in gender uh, i can uh, iterate from uh, for each and no need to filter actually but in uh, standard way i have thinking like this uh, we can uh, for each and filter it out in highest salary so i can take one variable and uh, taking the means uh, uh, zero index and salary i can uh, compare using predict if it is uh, greater than in uh, earlier number then i can put it in uh, variable and get it in uh, highest number of seller if if we if i uh, if if you want to writing i can uh, showing the screen and show it yeah but that is one way to to pick yes. something and compare it to uh, with every element which is yes. by for each loop but yes. uh, there will be that will be more uh, memory consuming time consuming don't you think uh, yes time uh, oh, i agree yes. there is uh, there is a new smarter way i need to learn that things because uh, i have tried this thing in uh, jre7 and jre8 uh, we are using filter or uh, putting in that uh we are uh, big sir or so i i haven't checked this is taking time or not we are checking like uh, we are call, calling rest services and db connection and uh, azure cloud so we are checking the millisecond of these things but never changing the code uh, checking in the code to taking the time or memory utilization okay and i have not faced the kind of issue but i agree in uh, high uh, big application facing kind of issue i can ready for learn that skill yeah that's great to hear so uh, coming to this filter method of uh, uh, stream api what mm-hmm. what what the filter method will return to us there is a return type of filter method or it returns something yes yes um collection current uh, current uh, list or list list of collection okay if if i filter out you using uh, list it uh, written the collection of list if i uh, putting the methods on map it will return the uh, collection of map okay i have never try with map but uh, i can over thinking about using list to map okay, okay. because hash map we we uh, that that kind of logic are built in uh, 
MSSQL, where just like postman to passing the data to database and they are calculating all that things and returning to me and I have provided the client. This kind of scenario is in my current project. Okay. But I'm to learn that thing. Okay, no problem. Uh, can you tell me the internal working of a hash map? Uh, yes, uh, hash map is how uh, default bucket size is 60. There is load factor uh, is 0.75. Uh, every time if uh, their uh, bucket size multiplied by load factor, it is uh, 12. If bucket size is 12 and uh, element is breaching over that 12, it will uh, increase the hash map size um, to the power of 5 and it will 32. So, so on if element is getting added, hash map automatically load factor will increase the memory of hash map. Okay. Okay. So one thing I I I will give you a scenario an, another scenario. Yeah. I have okay. a object, uh, employee object okay. say, and I override uh, equals and hash code methods. Okay. For this, so equal method always return true. Okay, and hash code method always return one. Okay. So what I did okay. in employee class, I override these two methods and employee equal, uh, equals method returning true and hash code method is always returning one. Now I create okay. two objects employee of our employee class E1 and E2. Okay. 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 And now I add these two entries in hash map. I mean, uh, I am using these two objects E1 and E2 employee objects as a key okay as a key in hash map to store values okay okay so what will be the size of that hash map because i stored e1 and e2 do you uh, have you got my yes. question yes yes i am understanding uh, i am getting to understand uh, e1 and e2 i have two separate uh, reference or i have passed the e1 is to e2 no i created two separate objects but yeah you need to take care that in employee class we we overrided equals and hash code method and uh, that will change some rules so you need to take care of that also yes yes because hash code if i add an element hash code always uh, and in, in equals hash code also hash code is always returning one and equals always returning true Yes, yes. So in this scenario, what I need to check? Yeah, you need to tell me the size of that map. Uh, map size would be the one. Okay. Because because uh, we're overriding hash code methods and equals method and passing the one. Uh, I have read yesterday only, but uh, I am not sure. But uh, hash code, if if I added element. The size will be uh, calculated by using hash code method because it's providing some unique, uh, you know, uh, yes, some kind of uh, calculation in element adding on hash map using hash code. So size will be one. Okay. And suppose we are storing, we are putting something like uh, map dot put e1 comma one or map dot put e2 comma two that means uh, if if i'm using key as e1 i'm storing value integer one and if i'm okay. using uh, 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 the key e2 then i'm storing the value e2 in subsequent lines so what hmm. will be the output if i say map dot get e1 uh, okay i have tried these things uh, means I have checked on a standard application E1 and E2. Uh, E2 is null or uh, something have no, string? No. The same thing, same th those two employee objects uh, E1 and E2 are there till now. Till now. Yeah. It will return 1. Okay. No, no, sorry. My bad, my bad. Okay. It will return, it will return two because 
uh, we are passing uh, second element is the key is same okay yeah that is correct okay okay so what is the difference between hash table and concurrent hash map uh concurrent hash map is thread safe uh, we are using for uh, storing like cache memory in concurrent hash map in current application we are using concurrent hash map for standard application where the uh, taking the data from uh, self force and adding it to hash map uh, based on the unique key of record id in the record for bureau check so uh, it's there for key and uh, value pair uh that that doesn't take any null or key uh, value in this concurrent hash map uh, same as hash table is hash table is uh it is also thread safe thread safe correct thread safe and containing key don't con- uh, doesn't take null key and null values in hash map hash table also okay so any other difference difference perspective uh, in terms of lock lock yes uh, we are using sima for uh, right now for thread lock uh, but i need to check again uh, if any internal jri structure is there any locking process for hash table and concurrent hash map i need to check this thing uh, yes the both are the same for thread safe also and uh, key and value pair are the same okay but uh, for try uh, high, like uh, high volume perspective we are using concurrent hash map that one thing i know about this okay okay so uh, suppose i have two classes uh, one is like parent class one is child class and the parent class is throwing io exception and okay. the child class is throwing null pointer exception okay so what do you think this will is there any compile time error run time error anything uh exception type uh, io exception yeah and in child class it is throwing null pointer exception uh parent exception will throw in compile time because it will check in input output in compile time for null uh, null pointer exception it will check in run time because it is a uh, run time exception when we putting on any null resource calling the uh, null resource null uh, method on that time we were getting null pointer exception okay okay so how you will detect a memory leak in your application memory leak memory leak uh, perspective current in scenario uh, we are checking in uh, task manager if i was if i have stand on application i have provided uh, memory through run dot bat and if is getting the higher memory i can check from cpu utilization uh, from memory and thread also okay. if taking the uh, thread size is big using uh, on stand on application and for linux uh, using top uh, grief grief uh, uh, process and uh, uh, pipe uh, number of uh, resources net stat io and through that i can check uh, the memory utilization of stand alone application and tomcat as well okay for memory leakage if anything in jre uh, if uh, i need to think i need to check these things okay. if any other way because in current application we are checking through this this things so not thinking in uh, other ways but if i any other ways i will check it. okay okay so while reviewing code of your colleagues yes what are the things you will take care uh, i have check first of all the null null checks null checks and uh, garbage code like if putting in uh, multiple for loops uh, code standard also code formatting and uh, uh, the things uh, anonymous objects like it these objects are not using in the class and if we declaring it or nullable references i will remove it from the 
things and documentary purpose uh, if i if uh, write some methods or block any kind of code uh, we put the declaration uh, doc doc comments we are adding on this code and also naming convention we are checking if writing something method like uh, where where uh, take fetching some data so sometimes uh, uh, we have some pressure and uh, colleague also we are reviewing the code that time we are checking the naming convention if we writing the function name okay because someone is looking that code he easily understand the things in by naming convention we are never putting like int i int j that kind of thing where take care if uh, mentioning the i better way to may mention the index index of whatever we are searching or deleting or updating whatever any things okay. like this okay so what type of design patterns you have used in your project other than singleton we have using singleton only but other than i know about uh cluster database adapter factory uh, for uh, one uh, i have recently uh, work with uh, isd app uh, project where using adapter pattern for the uh, converting to pojo from salesforce to uh, our java apis that time adapter pattern we have used okay okay so factory design patterns have you have, do you know about abstract factory as well abstract factory yeah mm, uh no frankly speaking but i can i can check it okay I will. yeah good uh can you tell me when to use abstract class and when to use interface uh abstract uh, abstract class using for means uh, the uh, standard way 0 to 100% uh, abstraction while actually using abstract class for abnormal methods we can write in abstract in instead of interface we cannot write in uh, uh, abstract methods uh, abnormal methods uh, for uh, perspective of abstract uh, we are uh, using these things in uh, our current project for uh, interface uh, we are connecting to salesforce and payment gateway uh, sources to so while using interface because interface does not show the internal logic i have checked it from docker so uh, to that time interface we have used because impl- uh, just defining interface and doing the signature and implementer plus through that uh, writing the main business logic to connect to salesforce and perform the real time transaction uh, Uh, records okay okay so uh, what is the difference between spring mvc and spring boot uh, spring mvc is a uh, web web msp uh, spring is uh, developed for web you know, instead of spring boot is we can develop stand alone application as well as uh, web application through that uh, annotation for rest control and rest uh, rest template uh, Now, rest of the rest controller and control through that we can create web application. Similarly, at the rest schedule task through we can create standalone application as well. So these are the difference. And in uh, Spring we can uh, Spring Boot is made easily and uh, code optimized because we have too many annotation to does not need to write too many code. Okay, so there are two annotations. One is path variable and uh, one is request param what are these uh path param is always read the data from url and request param will read the data from query, query oh, there, there is no uh, annotation called path param path variable i am by sorry yeah path path variable my bad actually uh, i have one uh, jersey application where we use these things uh, path param okay uh, it's old two old code actually j i developed in j r 7 so i have mismatch in this thing okay fine okay so what are the micro services uh i have recently started work with micro services uh micro services uh, dependency means uh, we can write lightweight services using uh, 
enable Spring Yuroko through their server. You can create. Uh, I have means I have tried this thing. I will explain it. Yuroko uh, uh, enable Yuroko server through that. I have created REST services independently, internally managing that thing. But I get the chance. I will learn a lot of about Microsoft services because in current organization is the NBFC domain and people are restricting to for the new things. They are running with just uh, one and a half. They are migrating JRE eight once I get on on road. So I'm ready to learn that things. So microservices, I have few things I have done in my latest project. Okay. So have you done unit testing as well? Uh, unit testing, we have done it, but actually the pressure of work environment, we not get that kind of uh, time to execute unit testing and means because it, they have separate QA automation testing team. They are checking the application live transaction. There's okay. a business team. So, but as a developer, uh, you need to write J unit test cases, right? Because uh, yes. I think QA won't write uh, J unit test cases for us. Correct, correct. correct. In Spring Boot, we are using J unit annotation test to so that. Uh, we are checking uh, that things. Okay. And what but in but in standard application for JRE and JRE 7 uh, application, we haven't checked the genetic testing. But in latest application, I have used this thing. Okay. So, have you, like, are you familiar yes. with Git? Yes, yes, I am familiar with Git. Uh, last two years, we are using Git. Earlier, we are using SVN, but now we are using Git. Git commit, git push, git pull, git head trash. Means I have familiar with this. Even I have provided to uh, it's newly people. I am guiding to how to use the git. Okay. Do you have any experience in Angular as well? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. No problem with that. Actually, the thing is that because uh, Bajaj is a product based company and there is a separate team for app development. We are just uh, managing the server side things like payment gateway servers and uh, our backend API standalone application. So UI perspective never get the chance and like Angular is on server side also, but things are restricted by the management. Okay. Okay. So that is fine. So I am done from my side. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, yes, just one question. What is the role and responsibility in current project? Means what if I get selected? What will the project and role and responsibility? 